From coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. The Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. South America. You're a part of the world's largest prayer and praise gathering. Joining us from Miami, Florida, our author, minister, and senior pastor of New City Church in Margate, Florida, Pastor Cullian Tavidjian. Speaker, producer, and founder of the God Chasers Network, Tommy Tinney. Motivator, author, and senior pastor of the Genesis Church in Sacramento, California, Dr. Takoy Porter. Dynamic author and evangelist, James South. Ministry to Music, anointed singer and minister, Steve Brown. Ready to make your calls, prayer partners around America. Minister and Senior Pastor of City Church in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Dr. Richard Ho. Thank you, everybody. Goodness, goodness, I'm glad you're with us tonight. We are in sunny Florida, right? Yes, we are. Hmm. Isn't this wonderful? This beautiful set. We're here in this gorgeous place. We're so glad you're with us. Now, I promise you, promise you, this is going to be one of those nights you're going to want to stay with me for the entire two hours. We've got a dynamite program coming up. You're going to love it. Do you know, we've got a guest with us tonight who's never been on TBN before. He says, ready for this? He says there are eight keys. He calls them kingdom keys, eight kingdom keys for unlocking the wealth that God wants to bring into our lives. I don't know about you. Anybody else needs some little wealth out there? Amen. Yes. We're going to be talking about that tonight. I promise you. Then, of course, our wonderful friend. You've seen him a thousand times. Tommy Tenney's with us tonight. A brand new book. Tommy keeps churning out those wonderful books. You'll love this one. It's about Ruth. We'll be talking to him about a lot of stuff. Then, I've got a young man with me tonight. I had him with us the other night when we were in Dallas, Texas. His ministry is seeing the most unbelievable miracles take place. I mean, I mean, have you heard about this? I mean, uh, jewels dropping out of the sky. I mean, uh, unbelievable healings taking place, gold dust appearing. He's actually seeing this, and we're going to be talking to him tonight. So it is going to be great. I promise you, it is going to be great. So I want you to stay with me. We've got a packed two hours that you're going to love with all your heart. But right now, I want you to meet some folks. Follow me, will you? These Precious pastors and bishops right over here have brought some of their congregation with them, and we're so glad that they're here. Amen? I want you to meet Bishop Fred and Carol Marshall. I think you, uh, I think you win the prize, whatever it is that we're going to give you tonight, right? Souls Harvest Christian Church in Hallandale, Florida, right? Yes. Is that a good church? It's, a best, it's one of the best church that Jesus has in South Florida. <laughs> Amen to that. Well, we're very, very glad you're here. Welcome. We're very glad you're here. Now, this is Apostle Steve and Michael, or Michelle? Michelle. I'm sorry, Michelle. I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like Michelle to me. That's why I looked up and said, wait a minute, this is not Michael. This is Michelle. Lyston. Liston, I'll get this right. The Restoration World Outreach Ministries in Hollywood, Florida, right? We we're, we're just drove through that a few minutes ago, right? Well. We're so glad you're here. You enjoying being at TBN and I? Yes. Right yes. Good. Bless you. Then, Pastor Neil. Now, you're going to want to meet these people. Pastor Neil and Judy Graham, Kingdom. Amen. Amen. 
Kingdom Impact Ministries International in Tamarack, Florida. How about that? We're so glad you're here. Isn't this good? He's a little smart, Alec, but we love him anyway, all right? <laughs> He's giving me a hard time about being from Oklahoma this morning. But anyway, we're welcoming you, and we're so glad you're here with your precious people tonight. Ready? Here is, here is Bishop Royston and Vita Tracy. Did I get that right? Yes, yes correct. I did. I did. Bishop of the Pentecostals Assembly International in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. God. The, most, the most exciting church in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> If you don't believe that, you ought to quit preaching. Amen? Amen. Does your pretty wife wear hats like that all the time? All the time. All the time. Yeah, the, the closed closet cannot hold them. We have to make a different room <laughs> a for, bigger, for the hat. A bigger yeah. closet for you. I yeah. understand. I like a woman in a hat. That's beautiful. Now, here is Bishop Daniel and Annie Harden of the Church of Christ Holiness Unto the Lord, also in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Great thing. There's a lot of great churches in Fort Lauderdale, aren't there? Yeah. 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 Things are so uh, fired up there, we had to name it Greater Faith. Greater Faith instead greater of Lesser Faith. faith. Let, no, Greater Faith. Greater Faith. Amen. I always see these churches you know, say, Greater this or Greater that. Does that mean there's a lesser that? No, it means that the Holy Spirit always is great there. Amen. And, and you can count on it. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. I love it. I love it, Bishop. Well, thank you. Thank you to all of you who came to be with us tonight. Bless you for being here. Steve, are you ready? Yes, he is. Steve Brock's about to sing. Oh, I like this song. Be somebody. Let's welcome him right now. Come on. Put your hands together, everybody. Now, Miss Sing, put your hands together. This world tries to make us feel like we're nobody. They put us down, give the run around, it makes us feel defeat. But I know one, he's God's own son, and me, he specializes. My life's been changed, been rearranged. Here I am, Gabriela. You don't have to be somebody. To be in the body, he takes everybody, Lord, and sets us free. Oh, you don't have to be somebody to be in the body. He takes everybody, Lord, and makes us simply as you go, you have to know somebody that'll let you in. As long as you got credit cards and money, honey, they'll always be your friend. But when you're down and your friends can't be found, no longer a part of the party. Set yourself free and come on and be a part of God's family. You don't have to be somebody. Be in the body. He takes everybody, Lord, and sets us free. Oh, you don't have to be somebody. Be in the body. He takes everybody, Lord, and may. Come on, everybody. Put your hands together now. Yeah. Aren't you glad you're part of this crowd and not part of that crowd? Should that trumpet sound, we'd rise to meet the Lord in the air. We are born again. We are family. And we love one another. Anybody love Jesus out there? Wave your hand at me. If you love Jesus, yeah, you don't have to be somebody to be in the body. He takes everybody, Lord, and sets us free. Oh, you don't have to be somebody to be in the body. He takes everybody, Lord, and makes us family. Ah, makes us family. Yeah, makes us family. Makes us family. Let it be, let it be, Bob. Thank you, one and only Steve Brock. Isn't he wonderful? He's here for the whole night. Well, they wanted to be here or not. So it'll be a great, great night, I promise you that. And I'm so glad you're here. Well, I got to say one quick word before I introduce this precious guest. Because he reminds me so much of my son, Israel. My son, you've met him sometimes on this show. Yesterday, his great church in Edmond, Oklahoma, called the Edge Church. I'm way too old to go to his church. But anyway, the Edge Church, they just opened their brand new, beautiful auditorium, his very first building as a pastor. How about that? So my son, 
I bless you and congratulate you and your precious people and all that sort of stuff. Isn't that good? Amen? Yes. So if you notice that my... You notice that my buttons are popping, it's because of that. How's that? Well, I want you to meet this precious young man, about the same age as my boy. Yeah. Exactly. This is Pastor Tullian Chavijan. Yeah, uh, you put Chavijan. Yeah. Tullian Chavijan. Boy. How's that? Tullian Chavijan. Yeah, perfect. He's yeah. a fabulous guy. A hard name, but a fabulous <laughs> guy. How's that? You got it? <laughs> He's the senior pastor of the New City Church right here in South Florida. We're so glad he's here. Welcome him right now. Would you please do that? Good to see you. Good to be here. Yeah, glad you're here. All right. Now, I know you're the I know you're the grandson of Billy Graham. Do you get tired of being the grandson of Billy Graham or no, the place you go? No, 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 you know? no. I really don't because it's a it's a remarkable heritage. It is an incredible heritage. I mean heritage. it's a it's you should it's be very a, proud of it. Very proud of it. It's not something I asked for, it's not something yeah. I deserve, yeah. it's not something I earned, but it's something you just that woke God, up and you were there. Yes, right? that was it. I didn't choose the family, but it's been a oh, it's remarkable be a blessing for yeah, me. No to question. Be able to have a front was there a seat. pressure on you? I mean, the kids grew up going and say, he's the grandson of Billy Graham. Did they all go, you know, you got into this. Was that ever no, a part of your life? I never really felt that. I really didn't, uh, which is a good thing yeah. that I never felt that sort of mm -hmm. pressure or that sort of thing hanging over my head. Uh, I mean, I knew that my family was set apart in mm -hmm. a way that other friends of my families were not. When but did you first know? I mean, when, when did it first, do you remember when you first started thinking, I'm the grandson of Billy Graham? I mean, when it was a big deal to you? Well, I mean, you know, I, I'm 35, which means I was born in the early 70s, but really right. grew up in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, and by that time, my granddad's ministry was not as much in the limelight as it had been in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. So uh, he was obviously very well known no in the church yeah. and very well known in mm -hmm. Christian circles, but uh, he wasn't as much in the public eye. So, Did your folks ever say to you, I know I said this to my kids, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the preacher's kid, behave yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did, did your no, folks ever say that to no. you? No, and I'm so grateful that they didn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, my granddad, of course, is a preacher, but my dad's a psychologist, uh -huh. so I didn't grow up as a preacher's kid. I see, yeah. Um, so that, you know, but I... No, I never felt that pressure, which yeah. I'm very grateful for, right. I, and, and I never felt that there were expectations placed on me. Well, with your father's last name, you could hide behind that yes, last name, right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little in bit. many ways, yeah. At least it wasn't yeah. Graham, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Now, I so. know that you went through a time of, even though you were Billy Graham's yes. grandchild, right, yeah. of uh, getting into a little rebellion yourself and yeah. going off in your own way. Tell us how yeah, that I happened. Yeah, I did. I'm, I am the middle of seven kids, grew up right here in South Florida. That would cause you to uh, rebel right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. That's what I blame all of my problems <laughs> yeah, really? on. Um, but I, I really did. There's a, there's a large age gap between the three older ones and the three younger ones, okay. and I'm right in the middle. Are you and really? so I was sort of in the unenviable position of being both a youngest child mm. and an oldest child, Boy. and I really wasn't sure where I fit. I can inside see that. the yeah, home. I can see that. And so I was bound and determined to figure out where I fit outside the home. Mm. Well, that led me to make some very unwise choices mm -hmm. regarding my lifestyle and things yeah. like that. Yeah. All of that culminated at the ripe young age of 16 when I dropped out of high school, really? got kicked out of my home. It was the, it, my parents. Wait, wait, wait. You get kicked out of your home? Actually escorted off of my property You're by the kidding. police. Is that right? That's the truth. Mm. And So where did um, you go? Well, you know, uh, different friends' homes. By the when I turned 18, I was able to sign a lease on an apartment and was able. So to from the time you're 16 to your 18, I was you're living, living with different friends. Yeah, literally living with right? different friends, living with different, mm. you know, families, mm -hmm. the friends of mine. So did um, you see your folks? I mean, were they a part of your yeah, life at all? Yeah, the first six or? months I was out of the house, I didn't have much contact with mm -hmm. them. But after that, my relationship with them mm -hmm. started to get better and better and better. It was a real last straw for my parents. I'm I mean, mm -hmm. my, my, my lifestyle had caused so much disruption in the home mm -hmm. that they were put in a position where they really yeah. had no other choice but to say, if you're going to continue yeah. living this way. There's six other kids they yeah, had to worry about exactly. also. Yeah, exactly. You can't do it. You can't do it at home. But Boy, I, that was a tough I, it was, and, and you know, the Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. Mm -hmm. And I would be lying to you if I said from the time I was 16 to 21, mm -hmm. I was absolutely miserable. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the Bible also says... <laughs> There's a rumble in the audience. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, People I did hear that. That there. scares yes. me a little yes, bit, to be honest too. with you. Uh, 
they're wondering exactly, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you know, I mean, but the Bible also says when that season mm -hmm. comes to an end, you mm -hmm. are left with a gaping hole in your soul that mm -hmm. only God is big enough mm -hmm. to fill. Mm -hmm. And at 21 years old, I came to the end of myself, and I came to the sobering realization that there had to be more to life than what this world was offering. Mm -hmm. There had to be more to who I was mm -hmm. than what I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. And as I often tell the people at the church where I pastor, it's mm -hmm. only when you come to the end of yourself that you come to the beginning of God. That's true. That desperation always That's true. precedes That's deliverance. True. Now, so. would you have said that you were a Christian before this happened? You know, or I talk you, about. I actually yeah. talk about that at you do length it, in the in book. the book. Yes, fact, I do. And I noticed that myself. I this do. is a wonderful book called Do I Know God, which is a great little book, by the way. Mm, well, yeah. thank you. Well, mm. I talk about it at length. This book really is, a, it really is in many ways um, a charting of my own spiritual mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I wrestled early on with whether or not I became a Christian when I was young mm -hmm. or when my life really changed at 21 because mm -hmm. my mom told me, you know, I led you in the sinner's prayer at right. five years old, although I don't remember. It was supposed to work remember. when you were five, yeah, right? That's right, and it didn't take. <laughs> you said, mother, um, work for a five-year-old. Yeah. She's a 16-year-old. Yeah, well, it was so, I mean, sh but I, but my life, of course, did not bear any fruit. I right. mean, there was no, right. there no was no evidence that, you were ever, that yeah. I was truly converted. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, at 21 years old, um, I believe is when God you saved really accepted me. The Lord. Now yeah. I, I I talk about this in the book, but um, I was sitting with a friend of mine probably six years ago, really wrestling with this idea of whether or not I became a Christian when I was five and mm -hmm. prayed the sinner's prayer, mm -hmm. or when I was 21 and my life really changed. Right. And he said something to me that really really liberated me. He said, "You know, Tully, and does it really matter?" The Bible has a lot more to say about how the Christian life ends than how it begins. Mm, that's true. And it helped me to see that, you know, for me to know that I know God, what's more important than being able to identify a particular moment in mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. when my relationship mm -hmm. with God mm -hmm. began, it's, it's much better for me to observe the way that I'm pressing on and straining sure, forward, sure, walking by faith sure. and not by sight. Let me back you up just a minute, though, because okay. you, you talk in the book a lot about, okay, there's one thing to know God yeah. in knowledge, mm -hmm. right? It's another thing to know God in a real relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, so at 21, mm -hmm. tell us what happened at 21. Well, I had, of course, and th those are distinctions I make in the mm -hmm. book, the distinction between factual knowledge and relational knowledge, mm -hmm. the difference between knowing about God mm -hmm. and knowing God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23, mm -hmm. there will be many mm -hmm. on that last day mm -hmm. who cry out to me, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name, we mm -hmm. did that in your mm -hmm. name, and Jesus will say to them, depart from me, I never knew you. Yep. And what he's saying there is that there are multitudes of people who go through life thinking they know God when in fact they don't. Mm -hmm. Well, this book is intended to answer those sorts of yeah, questions, yeah. and I had to answer that question for myself because mm -hmm. growing up in a Christian home, I yeah. knew a lot about God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had a your, lot your of knowledge factual bank knowledge. Was full, right? Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. I mean, my I could recite the Ten Commandments by heart. I knew the Apostles' Creed. Mm -hmm. I was in church every time the doors were open. So when you I were knew when a you lot. were in rebellion, did your folks send you to see Billy Graham? <laughs> No, but Billy Graham came to see me. Did he? Uh, <laughs> now, I'm happy to say that never once did he wag a finger in my face and say, son, you better shape up or ship out. I mean, in fact, right. what he yeah. would say. That's sort of the ultimate uh, ace for your folks to have, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to send mean, you to see Billy Graham. Yeah, 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 right. At that point, they knew nothing yeah, short nothing of would Jesus work. would work. Right, exactly. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, he, he never waved a finger in my face. And he, he said, if you ever need me, I'm here. I love you. I'm praying mm -hmm. for you. Good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of factual knowledge mm -hmm. about God, and so I was confused growing up thinking, I, I mean, I know God, when all I really had was knowledge about God because mm -hmm. I had grown up in church. I mm -hmm. mean, my, my theological convictions yeah. were very orthodox. Yeah. If you gave me a written exam, could I it. could pass it yeah. with flying colors. Mm -hmm. The, but, you know, I mean, obviously my problem so was what, that I didn't what, have relational what knowledge. What brought you to this, I mean, to this moment, this 21-year-old moment? Was there some there was super no, crisis? There, or was no, there, there no? wasn't. There wasn't, sort of a, a, there wasn't a particular crisis. It was a growing realization. It was this growing um, realization that there has to be more to life mm -hmm. than what I'm experiencing. Yeah. There has to be more... Mm -hmm to who I am than what this world is offering me. And it was just this culminating sense of emptiness, mm -hmm. 
loneliness. It was amazing because I had accomplished so much of what the world told me yeah. I needed to accomplish in order to, to okay, experience. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was supposed to be yeah. happy and satisfied. Yeah. And, and I was more miserable at 21 mm. than I had been at 16. And I finally came to the end of myself. And I don't remember a particular moment. I don't remember mm. a particular time. But I remember at, in the fall of 1993, at mm -hmm. some point in time in the fall of mm -hmm. 1993, God raised me from death to life. That's and I, it was, I've Praise never the been Lord. the same since. And you, isn't that wonderful? Thank God for that. Yeah. Amen. Now, so did you, did you immediately think, okay, I'm headed to the ministry? Or did you think the ministry, was that a later decision, ministry? You know, I, I don't... Because none of your brothers... It's interesting, you have all these siblings. Yeah. None of them are in the ministry. Yeah, not They formally. stayed on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Now you get off, and yeah. now you come... That's yeah, the way I pastors wanted, are. Have you yeah. noticed that? Have you yeah, noticed we're that all about, messed yeah. up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I... Shortly after God saved me, I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life telling as many people as possible mm. what God had done for me. Yeah. I did not know what form that would take. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if that would mean that I was just going to you know, go into business yeah. and be able to share my testimony sure. in various ways. I didn't know if that meant I was going to be a preacher mm -hmm. or a teacher. Um, but after God saved me, one remarkable thing happened. And it makes those who know me best laugh because I was never a student prior to this. But God gave me an overwhelming hunger and thirst yeah. to study and to learn and to read. He That's made me into a student. That's a sign. And so I shortly thereafter went to college uh, and then went to seminary, graduate school, um, and knew halfway through my seminary years that I was going to preach and I wanted to pastor. Yeah. And so I, I, I moved back to South Florida, which is where I grew up four and a half yeah. years ago to start New City. Isn't and God's great? doing remarkable things. That's, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now tell us quickly, though, New City is where? New City is about 20 minutes northwest of Fort Lauderdale. Okay. It's four and a half years old. Uh -huh. um, it's growing in every way imaginable. Mm. Um, we are thrilled to see the hunger and thirst for the gospel in yeah. South Florida. And cool. the people who are responding mm. to the gospel is just it's, I love it's it. remarkable. There's so, so many excited. wonderful young men like you that mm. I meet. Who, I guess because my son, you know, being about the same age yeah. as you are. And I, there seems like there's a whole generation of you guys, yeah. which it should happen, yeah. right, are, yeah. who are rising up and are seeing these wonderful churches yeah. that you're all growing. It's, you know, so some, of my, yeah. some of my heroes are getting older yeah, now. Yeah, sure. Um, and are needing to pass the baton. It's and time I'm, for a new generation yeah, to rise I'm up. And I'm so grateful that there are young men who are mm -hmm. being raised up by God, who know the Bible, who are committed to preaching the word, who mm -hmm. are committed to um, extending the gospel's mm -hmm. reach to the uttermost parts of the world, mm -hmm. and who are sold out mm -hmm. for the cause of Christ and the expansion of his kingdom. And I'm just happy to be along for the Praise ride. Praise God, me and you both. Yeah. I want to be in that boat as much as I can, yeah, right? Yeah, me too. Let me take yeah. you back to the book for just a minute, yeah. because I was very intrigued by this. You talk about who you wrote the book to whom you wrote the book. Yeah. Ta talk about that just a moment. Well, I say, and, I, and this is really, really important. This is the, even though this book is small, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Um, and some of that is because this is, this is something that I own. This really was born out of numerous mm -hmm. conversations I had mm -hmm. with people in my office who believed that they knew God because they had responded to an evangelistic mm -hmm. invitation mm -hmm. and you know went forward mm -hmm. when an altar call was given or they had prayed a sinner's prayer mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they automatically assumed that because they had done that, mm -hmm. Even though their life hadn't changed at all, yeah. that they knew God. And mm -hmm. so I really wrote the book to, to say this. If you know God, he wants you to know it. Mm. If you don't know God, mm -hmm. he wants you to know it. Yeah. The two things God does not want is for you to think you know God if you don't, mm -hmm. or for you to think you don't know God if you, you do. do. Right. So the first part of the book is really intended to help every reader discern whether or not they really know mm -hmm. God. It's sort of a spiritual inventory. Mm -hmm. um, it's a way of saying, okay, here are some ways that you might think you know God when mm -hmm. in fact you don't, mm -hmm. which is not easy necessarily. Oh yeah, really. But then the last half of the book was written to say, here are some ways you can know that you know God so that you can live with that sweet, satisfying assurance that mm -hmm. you are in fact a child That's of good. God. I mean, you don't... <laughs> 
no one wants to end up on that last day that hearing truth? depart yeah. from me. I never I didn't knew know you. you. Oh, yeah, I agree. So take a moment. This is your camera. Yeah. And talk to some folks who, who may be like you, who maybe they are not sure themselves whether they know the Lord or not. And pray with them for just a moment. Would you do it? If you don't know God or if you don't know that you know God, then I, I, I want to tell you that if you don't know God, he wants you to know him. And if you do know God, He wants you to know that you know Him so that you can live life with that sweet, satisfying assurance that you are, in fact, a child of God. It's the most important question you can ask, do I know God? Let me, let me pray with you now um, and ask God to make you aware of whether or not you know Him. And if you don't, I hope that this prayer will cause you to cry out to Him and ask Him to make Himself known to you. And if you do know God, but you're struggling with assurance or struggling with doubt, then I want to pray for you and ask God to remind you that Jesus said He will never leave you and never forsake you. And even though you might go through those dark nights of the soul, you need to be reminded by the promises in God's Word that He is there with you and for you. So let me pray for you. Father, I pray that you would be ministering to each and every person who's watching right now. There are those out there who think they know you and they don't. And they need, they need to be made, it needs to be, they need to know that they are great sinners, but you are a great savior. And there are those out there who are, know you, but they're struggling with doubt, they're in a season of sin and they're losing the assurance of their salvation. I pray that you would cause them to turn back and to run to the cross where a Savior is waiting with open arms. And for those who know that they know you, I pray that you would give them the strength and the courage and the boldness to be extenders of your gospel. But in any, whoever is out there who's listening, in whatever spiritual condition they are in, I pray that you would help everyone be able to answer with honesty and clarity for themselves the question, do I know God? So Father, we thank you for the good work that you're doing. We thank you for your care for everybody who's watching. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Great to have you here tonight, yeah, my great brother. great to be here. I, I can't let you go without asking, how is your granddad? How is he He's doing? He's doing well. Is About he? three weeks ago, he had minor brain surgery. Right. Uh, but came out of that well. He's at home resting and recovering. Isn't that and cool? we will see him in a few months. So we're looking forward to that. That's so good. Yeah. So good. Well, with that stock that you're from, you've got to be, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> DNA in you yeah. that's going to keep you going for the gospel yeah, for a long, long I hope time. I so. I hope so. Another book on the way? Yes. I'm in the middle of writing a book entitled Unfashionable. And Which the subtitle be... is How to Live Against the World for the World. Ooh, I like that. So, yeah, we'll see. Pray for me. I will. Because it's not coming very easily. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it probably is good that it's not coming yes, very easily, yeah. right? Yeah. But there's only a few Tommy Tennies in the world, you know. Yeah, They're able know. to write as much as he does. Yeah. But anyway, bless you, my brother. Thanks. So glad good to, to see you. you. Bless your work. New Thank City you. Church. New City in... Church. In... in Coconut Creek, Florida, just northwest of Fort Lauderdale, okay. newcityfl.com. Right. I love it. That's yep. great. All right. Steve, you ready again? He's back. He's about to sing once again, Sweet Anointing. Ooh, I love this song. Welcome him right now. Would you do it? <laughs> Worship the Lord with me. Lift your hands to him and say, Lord, let your anointing flow into my life. All of you watching right now, wherever you are, just lift that hand and say, Lord, touch me with that sweet anointing. Sweet anointing, giving hope and giving light in a world so dark, so dead. Sweet anointing, God. right now free from the chains of your life full 
of the joy in Him. Never, never are we turned away. His arms are always open wide. Do it with us tonight on this set right here, everyone. Walk into God's presence And in His love, His wondrous love Abide The presence Of a holy God Flowing from the throne above Never fear, don't ever worry what this whole world may say. We're made perfect. Perfect love cast out all fear in his love, sweet anointing. Pour it upon us tonight, Lord. Sweet anointing. Listen to these words now. Let them touch your life. There's a place. It's here. Right in this program right now. No matter what you're struggling with in your body, there's a healing hand in this house. There's a healing power in this place right now. To meet your need. Change your life. To heal your body. Whatever affliction you may have, he is able to work a miracle. Reach out and touch him right now, and I can testify. And when you're hurting from the sorrows of life, that old pain, it goes so deep. Just remember, you're in the palm of his sacred hand, right there in this power. This love to keep sweet anointing, sweet anointing, giving hope, giving light in a world so dark. So dead, sweet, sweet anointing, Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, free, free from the chains of your life, full of the joy in heaven. You know the chorus. Sing it with me now. In the presence of Jehovah, He's God Almighty. He's your, your Prince of Peace. Sweet and 
out right now and touch him. He's passing by. Whatever you need from the Lord, he's here to meet it. The Holy Spirit is in this house. I can feel his presence. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So just touch him now and let him make a difference in your life. That's Steve Brock. Wonderful, wonderful, dear brother. Well, my next guest, you know him very well. He's been on TV and many times. I know you've probably read many of his books also. Tommy Tenney's with me tonight. Let's welcome him right now. Would you do that? Come on. <laughs> Tommy? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, Richard. I understand you just uh, literally got off the plane after flying in from South Africa. My first full day back. Are uh, you jet lag already? You know what? People get blessed with different things. They have different anointings. I do not get jet lag. You're kidding. I get tired. Is this a pill you can give people? You can make <laughs> some money out of this, man. <laughs> no, I, I just, after uh, 35 years of travel. Back and forth. Yeah, you, you never know where you are, do you? No. You, you, you know what? You look at the telephone book. And seriously? I have. Have you ever woke up somewhere and you yeah, didn't you realize where, where am I? Yeah, you yeah. just look at the phone book. It tells you where you are and then everything's on everything's track. Everything's peaceful after that, right? I had a great time in South Africa. What did you do? Yeah, I was going to say, tell us about South Africa. What did you do? Uh, my sort of uh, motto is when I'm away from my family, I want to be working really hard, mm -hmm. planting and plowing in the vineyard. Amen. And I uh, was in South Africa for eight days, spoke uh, in eight cities 16 times oh, and goodness. had an incredible time. Came no back. wonder you're tired. You never know where you are. You're also so tired you don't know where you are. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Oh, I actually got a good day. I got in last night mm -hmm. and had a good day's rest today. That's great. You're ready to go. Here at TBN with Richard saying hi to the world. There you go. Thank Amen. you to Paul and Jan. Amen. Always. Always. Yeah. Are you working on a book right this minute? Yes. <laughs> are you? Two. Every time I talk to you, you've got two or three books in the, in the I, hopper. I've learned to write two at a time. Are you really? I, seriously. Yeah. So how many are you putting out every year? Oh, uh, one year I wrote six, but the publisher said it gave them publishing indigestion, <laughs> and, uh, so I slowed it down. He said, okay, well, I'll stretch that out a little bit, right? But I, I love writing. Yeah, I, you're very good. Uh, I, I get a, I don't know, I get a, a, thr a thrill, if you could use the term, and connect it spiritually mm -hmm. out of when I feel like a phrase is particularly well turned. Mm -hmm. And I typically rewrite a book about six or seven times before I release it. Mm. And uh, there's a little mental marker that whenever I'm reading the book and want to start highlighting and taking notes on right, myself, right. it's done. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's when you know it's, it's I li done. literally kind of lose good. yourself in the That's process good. and you forget. Because I remember uh, many times in this book I just finished, I just, it, it's done. Mm. Let's pull good. it out of the oven. Say, let's go. Yeah. That's cool. So what do you see yourself doing long term? I've thought about you many times about, you know, your life and what you've, because you've done so many things. You've been in this for a long time. You know, neither one of us are spring chickens. Are right? you saying I'm old? <laughs> no, no, I'm simply saying that you I are, actually you are, uh, you are maturing as I'm, you go. I'm proud of every silver hair. Uh -huh. uh, You're not going to tell us your age, of course. Sure. What? 52. 52. I so celebrate. see, I mean, so as you're moving into this next phase of your life. I love grandchildren. Uh, been married 32 years. Hi, honey. Hi, kids. I'll see you <laughs> really? tomorrow. Uh -huh. And I, uh, you know, travel is what I'll do, but... I mean, want, do you see yourself? I've, I've thought many times, I've, I've wondered if you would sort of cocoon yourself away someplace and just do nothing but write, you know, if because you're I so good at it. If I did what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. that's what I would do. Maybe. But I, I'm not, under, I'm in the Army. Yeah. I take orders from the captain. Well, that's true. And... 
I also love getting out and mingling with people, mm -hmm. mixing with people. Never trust a shepherd that doesn't smell like sheep. Well, that's true. I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> they don't smell <laughs> he like needs sheep. To get out in the lot probably a not better. a shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Whatever that's he calls way, himself, right? That's the way yeah. I get out in the that's good. Uh, with the sheep. Yeah, that's cool. Like whether it. it's South Africa or mm -hmm. week before that it was Peru, and the week before that it was Costa Rica. Two things I'm doing. I'm moving more into cultural evangelism. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is what? Uh, preaching, but not behind a pulpit. Uh, in that, I mean, first of all, about. writing fiction books. Mm -hmm. Fiction books reach a different audience, mm -hmm. and I refuse to allow the publishers to classify my books as Christian fiction, mm -hmm. and I call it sneaky preaching. It <laughs> sneaks up on people, yeah. and it's a way to get the gospel. I've had people get saved on cruise ships because my books are in the library of the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. If it had been a Christian book, it may not have been yeah, placed maybe. in there. Mm -hmm. And so I call that cultural evangelism. The, the movie experience was very learning, and uh, if God opens that door again, you would do it again. I'm, I'm ready to walk through it. It was nerve wracking and tedious, and, but I probably preached to more people mm -hmm. when the movie came out in theaters, made number nine in the nation. And, uh, it's sold over a million copies and mm. with 20th Century Fox. I just think I'm in South Africa, and mm -hmm. It's in theaters there. That's so, great. Uh, is, is there a cultural, I mean, because of, I, mean, I, I pick up the new book, I was reading it today, and it certainly speaks to me. And it's, a, it's an American adventure, the whole thing. But does that relate over to South Africa and absolutely. these various places? And People love to have a peephole to look at American culture, mm -hmm. which now, now we have to explain the book. And yeah. I'm not trying to sell a book. <laughs> no, but no, no, no. The, the, fi the fiction yeah. book is about, uh, yeah. it's about Ruth. Mm -hmm. But what I did is, it is a contemporary... It's today's Ruth. Well, if the book of Ruth were to be... I'm not claiming to have written the Bible. I don't want to get... The, but if the book of Ruth... Thank God, the canon is closed and you're closed. not going there, right? Uh, right? First of all, the book of Ruth is four chapters. <laughs> this took me 400 pages. <laughs> but if the book of Ruth were to be written today mm -hmm. in American culture, mm -hmm. the story of Ruth begins with a famine in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Well, I start this in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Right. When Bethlehem Steel is <laughs> bankrupt, mm -hmm. 7,000 people lost their job the first day and on and on until there's economic famine. Mm -hmm. And a lady named Naomi, her mm -hmm. husband, and their two kids have mm -hmm. to move to Moab, Utah to get a job. <laughs> and <laughs> Took you I, a while to find those names to put all this together. No, actually, you, I've uh, been in Moab. That's yeah. what sparked it. Is it? I didn't realize there was a Moab, Utah uh -huh. until I went there. It's, uh -huh. Arches National Park. Right. It's the, yeah, uh, it's beautiful. It's the uh, mountain biking capital of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not too. It's within the economic outreach of Las Vegas, right. and it gets sucked into the Las Vegas economy. Mm -hmm. The husband dies. The two sons die. One of the sons marries a Mexican American immigrant, the daughter of illegal immigrants, Ruth Escalante, <laughs> and the story is about how this woman from a Mennonite background and Ruth Escalante journey home. And that's why it's called The Road Home. Yeah, it's a great book. I mean, I, I, I haven't time to really dig into it totally, but from what I skimmed, it's Marilyn great. will read it. She will. <laughs> <laughs> Probably she will. But then the new one is kind of interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's not just kind of, I think this is very interesting. You always come up with these weird little ways in which you're going to cast a story, if I may say. Talk to us about this one, about the whole, you know, uh, satellite. First of all, have, have you ever been lost? No, never. You see, I'm a man. My, I would my, never admit my to be point lost. Exactly. Are you kidding? <laughs> are you men, kidding? Men are never lost. <laughs> men never get lost. Men never ask for directions. No. No real man we'll worth his out. salt would yeah. ask for directions. Yeah. We may have to circle the block ten times. Hey. But uh, I'll find I, out where I'm at. Yeah. What's interesting <laughs> is we put a GPS on the cover. Yeah. Uh, and I thought about this afterwards. I would, would have put it in the book, but I got a new car, and it dawned on me as they were setting all the stuff up. All the GPS, you know, the little, mm -hmm, sure. the, it's you. always a woman's voice. Oh, saying, turn around. They got turn it. Turn around. I, yeah. And I said, I, I ponder these deep things. Yes, you do. That's amazing. Why, what why is it a woman's voice? And I, I thought, well, because. Because you're used to having we, a woman. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You that's right. Say it. We're accustomed to the women telling us <laughs> yeah, where to go. Yeah, so. Yeah. Can't you stop now and get directions? But anyway. Well, what really frustrates me is when that woman's voice comes on and she says, when possible, yeah. make an immediate U-turn. Right. And that's a diplomatic way of saying, you bumbling idiot, <laughs> you have missed the turn, right. turn around, go back. Right. And actually, that's what made me come up with that. That's what Naomi did. An internal 
GPS, mm -hmm. or if we would call it uh, EPS, mm -hmm. an eternal positioning system, mm -hmm. inside of Naomi, came alive mm -hmm. and said, I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. This is Moab. This is the place that stole my uh, husband. It's taken my sons. Mm -hmm. I'm going home. Mm -hmm. How, she has the prodigal's advantage that the prodigal always knows the way home. Mm. So this homing device in her says, go back to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And Bethlehem is really not a, a place of geography. It's a place of, of uh, values. Mm -hmm. And it, it really resonated with me mm -hmm. that our society today, in fact, the world, is a place where things are not valued. Life is not valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, Moab, sacri and biblically, sacrificed babies to the idol god Molech, mm -hmm. and that was how they worshiped. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the only difference in Moab in modern society is we've learned how to sacrifice our babies before they're born. Mm, and from Moab and not valuing life mm -hmm. to not valuing family, mm -hmm. not valuing uh, friends, uh, I was so glad to see you. Yeah. Uh, never trust anyone that all their best friends they've only known for six months. <laughs> really, isn't that the truth? Because if yeah. they got to nurture and nourish long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. And so the value of family, that's what she returned to, the value of friends, mm -hmm. and the value of character. Mm -hmm. A lot of people fail to realize that when Ruth went back, she was willing to become a peasant, whatever she had to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I tried to figure out, we don't have a, biblically it's called gleaning. And it's, yeah. who knows what gleaning is. Yeah. I mean, you and yeah. I do because yeah. we study those mm -hmm. things. But that was when mm -hmm. they harvested the corn, what was left, somebody picked it up. It's like recycling. Mm -hmm. So basically, she went by and picked up bottles and cans mm -hmm. alongside the road mm -hmm. to make sure yeah. that Naomi was taken care of. That's good. And that speaks to me of the work ethic, mm -hmm. of character. Mm -hmm. And Naomi, uh, when Ruth was willing to work in the field one day, in order that she might own it the next day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want to own the field, yeah, then but they won't, don't want to work in the <laughs> that's field. That's true, that's true. And that that's addresses the, the loss of value. So mm -hmm. I, I just really, that's good. and maybe it's because I'm 50. Mm -hmm. Why did you write it? I mean, what, what, was, what was the message, if you had to say, okay, this is what I want to say with this book, what was it? <clears throat> First of all, I wanted to preach to the spiritual and not the religious. And there's a lot of people, uh, over 85% of America agrees and believes that there is a God, but not near that many of them go to church. So there's this spiritual hunger, mm -hmm. but they haven't identified how do I connect with what's really important. And also, I, I reached a point in my life, and I told you in the car today, mm -hmm. that I'm trying to simplify my life. Because maybe it's the grandchildren that are suddenly there that makes you realize what is really important. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find my way to things that really matter mm -hmm. and found out that some things that I thought were important mm -hmm. probably aren't. And I haven't always made the right choices, mm -hmm. but uh, I've tried. Mm -hmm. And so this is maybe my process. Uh, people say, how do you write? Mm -hmm. Really, my books are a process of my personal devotion mm -hmm. when I'm working yeah. things well, out in my own walk. I'll tell you what I got out of it as I was gleaning through it myself, <laughs> all right? It was this. You know, there, there is, if I may be so bold as to, <laughs> to write a comment on, on, your, on your book. Uh, There's plenty that did comment. I know, it's amazing who's in there. But, um, you know, there, there is a homecoming. There is a going yes. home. You know, you know there, there always has to be that one place, some place. And once again, it's not just geographic, but there's got to be that place, that safe place, you know. Where your and destiny think, is secure. Yeah. Where you feel safe mm -hmm. and you realize where I am. Uh, T uh, Tullian Chavidian mm -hmm. at 21. You said it. I'm, I tried. I'm impressed. I was you were practicing over there. Practicing over there. Yeah. I promise you. Uh, but I was impressed, number one, that his family never put yeah. the, uh, the, the emphasis on yeah. look whose grandson yeah, the you grand are. the grand mantle on him, yeah. But mm -hmm. look whose heavenly son you mm -hmm. are. And suddenly at 21, he said, I'm going home. Yeah, yeah. Like Naomi said, mm -hmm. this is not for me. Mm -hmm. And I really sense, for what I feel, mm -hmm. that in our the awakening of our society as young men his age hit their 30s, they're suddenly going to say, wait, mm -hmm. job is not more important than family mm -hmm. because you can be become a workaholic yep. just like you're an alcoholic. A lot of us did that. And uh, it's about family. Mm, sure. Uh, 
It is about those grandkids, ultimately. You know, but I, I was thinking, Tommy, even about spiritually in the Lord. I mean, you know, in our, our society, man, we push each other like crazy. You know that. I mean, God, we live in such a hedonistic world, it's unbelievable. If you I, miss one panel in a revolving door, you're off schedule for a week. Yeah, I mean, we, we're so driven by it. And now everything is coordinating our whole life, right? <laughs> you know, and I thought, you know, as I, as I glanced through this, I thought, boy, that's a great message. There's got to be a time in which people just finally say, look, I got to go home. You know, I got, I've got to find my own roots. I've got to know who I am. And I'm talking about in the Lord. Right. Yeah, which but, I know you are too. But what happens is heaven's values have to be superimposed on earth. Mm -hmm. When That's God good. gave the Ten Commandments, it really is not so much you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that, as it's a reflection of His values. Mm -hmm. God is saying, I don't steal. Mm -hmm. I don't covet. I don't That's want good. anything you have. I don't do these things, and if you want to be my friend, mm -hmm. then you need to have those values because I wouldn't be Richard's friend if I had to hold my wallet yeah. every time Freedom I got close. Steal every time. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I know that we share values. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes people don't want to go in certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go here. They don't want to hang out with those people. It's not that I don't like those people, but their values may be different, and mm -hmm. there's a value clash. Mm -hmm. And in America, mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. there's a value clash mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to address that. Uh, I don't remember, page 11 or 22, I always pick a sort of favorite statement out of a book, and I think it's there. It says, you can know the cost of everything, mm -hmm. but the value of nothing. Mm -hmm. You can know the cost of a new car or yeah. designer jeans, yeah. but you don't know the value of a mm -hmm. cup of coffee with mm -hmm. an old friend mm -hmm. and uh, cool. nurturing those relationships. That's good. That's good. Tommy, you too. T take a moment. Minister to us just a second, will you, and personally, and and pray with us before you... Can I just talk to people? You may. Do whatever you want. Just take some time and pray with us. Will you do it? I don't know who you are. I don't know what's been going on in your life. Um, maybe work. Maybe absentee relationships. It's hard to mass produce covenant level relationships. You can't just stamp them out. Whatever you nurture will grow. Whatever you abandon will die. And I just want to encourage you that you are important, that God made you for who you are. Align your values with heaven. The Bible is our, really our GPS. It tells us what's important. Maybe go back to your family. Maybe I'm talking to someone right now that this would be a good time for you to pick up the phone and call someone who's estranged. If you're at home and you feel the need to connect and you don't know how, there should be a number at the bottom of the screen right now. And I see prayer partners sitting right in there. They'll connect with you. Uh, you're important and your destiny matters. I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you. I thank you for new friends that are watching right now. I don't want to come across condemning. I don't want to come across, but you can't antagonize and influence at the same time. I've made mistakes. They've made mistakes. But as my friend Richard here said, we're coming home. We're coming back to what's really important, coming back to the heart of the matter. And it's you, Lord. You laid the pattern of family, of friends, that character's important. Let us identify with those and come back to you. I encourage you, friend. You don't have to yell a prayer. You don't have to scream a prayer. You can whisper a prayer. You can even breathe a prayer, but heaven hears and there will be a difference. Wherever you are, if you're on the wrong road, if you're going the wrong direction, don't be like I have been and others and refuse to ask directions. Find out how to get back. Turn around. Let's go home. Amen. All right, brother. Good, good, good. One quick question. Are you still chasing God? Yes, sir. Are you? Absolutely. I know, Mel, you've had such, the, so many great things have happened for you since you wrote that book. Think about all the wonderful success you've seen. It's it, not my success, Richard. I know it's not. I know it's not. He, uh, Jesus Christ is the magnificent obsession of my soul. Amen. Amen. When you start talking about him, I get, I get touchy. You know what drew me to you initially? I remember the very first time I ever interviewed you. I forget where we were, but I remember the very first time. And we started talking about chasing God, and you started crying. You remember I that? <laughs> I can't talk about Jesus. I know it. I love it. And I said that night, I said, man, I love this guy. I mean, this is the, this is the man I want to be around. And it was wonderful. I am determined that you can be normal and supernatural. Mm -hmm. 
I'm tired of glorified goofiness passing itself off as so-called anointing. Mm -hmm. I want to love my grandkids. Amen. I want to be a good husband, mm -hmm. make my mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, one great man said, it's not how often you get off track, because we all do. Yeah. It's how quick you can get back on track. Yeah, be a great repenter. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. loved what Turling said. He's, uh, and I probably did his name wrong yeah, that time. Yeah, you did, but that's said, all right. <laughs> we'll practice I, on this I'm all I'm going to copyright that phrase before he does, great sinners. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, I may write about great sinners of the Bible. I thought I could see this you, percolating you've got in you to already. You've got to be a great sinner to need, need yeah. a Savior. It's true. It's true. It's always good to see you, Tony. It's good to see you. Love you much, brother. We pray for you. Yeah. We pray the best on you always. Amen. Don't you love this guy? Amen. Think you ready? He is. Strongholds. All right. Welcome Steve Brock right now. Come on. Everybody, put your hands together. Help me see. All across this land, there's an army band. Its captain is the Lord. We have counted the cost of winning the loss. God's power is our source. When Satan has control, we're taking back souls. Minds are being set free. Come on. Mounted up with our armor on, going in the name of the Lord. Everybody say, strongholds are coming down. I want to hear you say, strongholds are coming down. Yeah, here and now, by the word of his power, strongholds are coming down. I said, God's children will prevail. We're going to storm the gates of hell. I got a sword in my hand. This place from the ceiling to the floor. To the floor. Those that have been in bondage ain't gonna be that way no more. No. Leak by leak, chains are falling off. God's children are being set free. Yeah, taking back all the stolen goods from the cabin of the enemy. Everybody say. of the hell shall not prevail against it. There is no power on this earth that can conquer you, friend. You are free in the power of the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in that power tonight. Everybody say strongholds are coming. Everybody say strongholds are coming down. Yeah. Here and now. By the word of his power, strongholds are coming. I say God's children. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, I love Steve Brock, don't you? Isn't he absolutely wonderful? Mm -mm, what a voice. Anyway, I love when I get to meet someone for the very first time who's never been on TBN before. I promised him we would be very, very good to him tonight, all right? This is a great pastor from Sacramento, California, the Genesis Church. That's right. I like that. I like that. I like that, don't you? From Sacramento, Dr. Takoy Porter. 
Got it's it. this wonderful man. I want you to welcome him to TBN right now. Come on, do it, would you? Uh -huh. Bless you, my brother. Thank you. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank you. Glad you're here. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Now, before we talk about your book, which I want to really okay. talk about your book tonight, but before we do, uh, you were a businessman heading up your own little deal, have your MBA, all this sort of stuff. All of a sudden, your father, d did your father die? Yeah, he passed away. Okay, so he started a church about, you know, so it's about nine years old. He passed right. away, and all of a sudden, the there. church says, son, <laughs> here, right. here, the businessman. The mantle, the mantle is drops. on you yeah, now, right? Yeah. Well, it came, came on me and my brother. Yeah. And my brother was already working in the ministry. Uh, my mother was w working in the ministry, but then they also needed me to come in yeah. and help and with help, the leadership. Help get the thing going. And keep it going yeah. and yeah. continue the uh, flow of the ministry. So you're a businessman. You come yes. in, the very first thing you do, you start looking at the business aspect of it, and you're saying... Right, well, I'm counting the, the numbers, you know, I'm counting <laughs> the cost yeah. and everything, because, yeah. you know, I'm, I did sure. pretty well in business. Mm -hmm. I had a, a six-figure position with a major university. I had 300 people. Uh, who reported to me through levels, uh -huh. and I was traveling across the country. And, um, you know, I'm the preacher's kid that yeah. really didn't want to become a preacher. <laughs> you were thinking you had you know, avoided that, right? I, I, yeah, 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 and I love yeah. the Lord. I didn't, sure, I know, like, you know, I didn't want to be in church or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Actually, I was highly involved in church. I was my dad's uh, assistant co-pastor yeah. at the time. But I thought, okay, maybe that's it, yeah. you know? Yeah. But the Lord drafted me in. That's great. He drafted me that's in, great. and he said, there's a greater work yeah. for you to do. Thank God. And yeah. ultimately, you resign your post of that 300 folks you're uh, ready, yeah, and yeah. you come to take the church on full time, which is yeah, great. Yeah. Now, but, so I'm trying to bridge real fast to get to your book, is what okay. I want to talk to you about, okay. right? But, so, you, once you get in there, you realize financially, the, there are a lot of things that you're seeing that Christians just don't know. Right, right, right. right. And talk again, it's kind of it's kind of coming from a business perspective where mm -hmm. I'm dealing with numbers all the time mm -hmm. and with money, large mm -hmm. sums of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I noticed was that there's a lot of people in our pews, mm -hmm. in, our, in our congregation, right. that um, love the Lord, mm -hmm. but they don't understand um, <laughs> how loving the Lord relates to having money. Yeah. And they really believe mm -hmm. there's an evil mm -hmm. or, or something wrong mm -hmm. um, with having money or mm -hmm. using money. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's an evilness to it and still being a Christian. Yeah, yeah the, the fact is, oh, I agree with you totally. Man, I, I think mm -hmm. you're dead on. Because I think there is this idea probably coming out from our far past, to tell you the truth, right. in which we thought, hey, if you really love God, you take a vow of poverty. That's right. And, you know, you certainly aren't going to have a lot of stuff, and you get to go to heaven someday when you die, and so, hush. And, right, right, right. <laughs> and, right. And get on through this exactly, thing, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and, just, yeah. and just make it, let the Lord provide uh -huh. and everything. And what happens is that, you know, um, people come in, and they love, love the Lord, they shout, they worship really hard, mm -hmm. yep. but then they go back to the same financial problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the same, mm -hmm. how do I pay my bills? Yeah. Yes, you know, I, I felt the Lord today, yeah. but then how I'm still worried the about that, yeah, the rent, yeah. the mortgage, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure, I'm not, I don't have the answer. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that the church should be in the mm -hmm. forefront Amen. of providing such answers as I these. I agree with you totally, I agree with you totally. Mm -hmm. So out of that then comes this book, exactly. Right? exactly. which is called Releasing Your Inner Treasure. Mm -hmm. What a great title. Yeah, That's a yeah. good title. <laughs> Releasing Your Inner Treasure. Eight Kingdom Keys to Unlocking the Wealth Within You. Right. Wow. Right. Right. Guys, he's just he's just a big man, so those shoulders are probably <laughs> Yeah. So let's look at this together. I mean, talk to me about what you found here, because it's very interesting to me. You're a businessman by training. Now you're in the ministry by calling. And so right. you're addressing this problem of the lack of wealth with your people, both from a business standpoint and from a and from a ministry standpoint, really, right? Right, right. So what did you find? Let's well, talk about that. Well, the first thing I did, I tackled the problem and the issue head on. Okay. And I, I digged into the scriptures to see what the Lord, what the Bible really said mm -hmm. about money. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I found was Jesus talked about money all the time, hmm. all the time. But the money, <laughs> the Bible is uh, has so many references towards money to, and both it's very balanced too. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, it talks about the good things about money, warns us about what yeah. it can do right. um, evil mm -hmm. in our lives if we, if we let it master us. Mm -hmm. But then it also shows us how we can master money. it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and use it for the upbuilding of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So are these the kingdom keys you're talking about? These are exactly the kingdom keys. Okay. And I, okay. really, they're principles. Okay principles. One thing I found out was a lot of us think we in, are in relationship with God, but really aren't mm -hmm. because we don't understand 
um, how God works. Mm -hmm. We know who God is. Mm -hmm. He's our savior. He's our deliverer. Mm -hmm. He's our king. Mm -hmm. But then we don't know how he saves. Mm -hmm. We don't know how he delivers. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand you know, how he do does these things. And these are the principles, the mm -hmm. kingdom, mm -hmm. keys, Good. that unlocks heaven Good. so that we may experience heaven Good. on earth. Mm -hmm. Well, talk to us about those. I want to know what those are, right? You got you found oh, eight yeah. keys, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you tell us what those are? Oh yeah, most definitely. Okay. Um, the first key is uh -huh. it all starts in your mind. Hmm. It all starts in your mind. Mm -hmm. We are the fruit of our thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, yep. so, so is he. he. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us believe that we are supposed to be broke. Mm -hmm. You know, we think that. <laughs> you know, if that's been our experience, right? That's been our experience. Say, well, it must be the will of God. It right? must be the will of God uh -huh. because you know, I pray for money. I uh -huh. pray for money, uh -huh. and it doesn't show up. It yeah. doesn't rain down. I, I even tithe, mm -hmm. and it doesn't come like I think it should come. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to start changing our mindset and start really understanding that we are worthy. That God really wants us to be blessed, mm -hmm. and there's a purpose for our prosperity. There's a purpose for mm -hmm. our money. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's, I, uh, God, it's almost I, like giving yourself permission to, to have money. Well, it, in a way, it is. It's like oh, you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and God does not mind you having, you know, God not, is not a jealous guy in, in that way, yeah. in that he doesn't, you know, he's not like jealous of our cars. He's not jealous of our homes <laughs> yeah. or oh, anything like that. Nice car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. You okay. know, yeah. um, uh, he becomes, it becomes an issue when we start placing those things before him. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. You know, anything. but as long, yeah, anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as long as we don't do that, mm -hmm. then God said, use it. Mm -hmm. Use it. Use it for my kingdom. Mm -hmm. Use it to be a commercial mm -hmm. unto other people. That's so that's the first key, that's you good. know. So how did you get people, how, do, how would you teach your people, how are you teaching your people mm -hmm. to say, okay, this is a mindset that's keeping us squished down here. Right. How did you begin to say, okay, this is how you get free from that and begin to renew your mind? What did you tell them to do? Well, I just started telling, you know, I actually went through these keys, these mm -hmm. principles, and um, I talked about um, how there's a miracle in your mouth. That's another kingdom key. Mm -hmm. And I talked about how you can speak words, how your words frame your world. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. words frame your world. Mm -hmm. And so I had to uh, mm -hmm. put a rubber band on. I talked oh, about really? this in the book, uh -huh. uh, I think the third chapter, uh -huh. and the third key. And uh, I told him, put a rubber band on. And every time you speak negatively, snap yourself. Pop it. Pop it. Boy, you just saw the pop church. <laughs> all near the church. Uh -huh, pop, 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 pop. Say, man, what's all that popping going on? Right, right. One, one of my yeah. uh, members came to me and mm -hmm. said, Pastor, I don't know if I can do this. I went through a whole box of rubber bands. <laughs> Back up. Yeah, but then, you, you know, we really well, talk negative. You say, well, get some more rubber bands, right? Right, right. I, I, in this deal, I, I, I looked at this before the show tonight. You say in this, uh, this is in, it begins in your mind. You say, or in your mouth, you say, these are the negative things. I can't afford it. Right, right. Uh, that's out of my league. Mm -hmm. It's I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm mm -hmm. not ready. I can't do it. I'm not smart enough. I don't know where to start. Right, right. Well, that holds right. a guide back, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we wonder why we're not progressing as mm -hmm. we th think that we should, mm -hmm. as God would like to see us. Mm -hmm. We snare ourselves mm -hmm. by our mouth. You know, mm -hmm. it says that power, the power of life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. death. Yeah is in the tongue. Right. I say choose life. Yes. Choose life, life. Yeah. so that others mm -hmm. might live through you. So you're, tell, you're telling your people then, I mean, to begin to make positive confessions, begin to say, that's right. I can have wealth. I can yeah. have, the, the, that's what you're saying. Right. And I, and I like myself. I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's another key that I talk about that says that you are your wealth. Your wealth does not come from the outside in, mm -hmm. but from the inside out. Mm. We are the treasure. There's mm -hmm. giftings mm -hmm. and talents mm -hmm. that God has given each and every one of us mm -hmm. that will produce wealth for us mm -hmm. and so that we may bless mm -hmm. mankind. Mm. But we mm -hmm. have to look on the inside. You know, mm -hmm. we're looking for yeah. our uh, salvation and deliverance yeah, always outside. on the outside. Mm -hmm. But God said, I placed that in you. Mm -hmm. I have given you the power mm -hmm. to get wealth. Mm -hmm. And if people just would tap inside of them mm -hmm. and just watch God, let God use them, let God mm -hmm. 
you know, really work through them and, and get out of their box. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about what other people are saying mm -hmm. about them and thinking about them mm -hmm. because you're going to get criticized when you yep. start to produce. Yeah, you are. And everything. Good. But then you have yeah. to allow people, you can't allow people's words to snare you mm -hmm. and start making you doubt the gift that God mm -hmm. has inside Ooh, of good. you. That's good. So that's you good. are your wealth and you got to go ahead and just show it. You got to do it. Mm -hmm. You got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that. I do. I do. Too. I do. Now, are are you, are you seeing, are you telling your people, for instance, um, if I begin to see myself as worthy, mm -hmm. then are you saying that, are you saying then that God will begin to place ideas in my mind about what I'm to do? In other oh, yeah. words, I, oh, yeah. I mean, I just so I can make money, so I can have these things? Right. Is that what you're saying? Right. Well, yeah, it, it, again, it starts your mind. You And I believe when you start thinking this way, talking differently, mm -hmm. thinking differently, mm -hmm. um, acting differently, mm -hmm. then God will start sending men unto you. Mm -hmm. He says the gift will make room for, for you. Mm -hmm. And then also he will place you before great men. Mm -hmm. I'm a living witness. Mm -hmm. I'm on TBN. <laughs> <laughs> Hot diggity dog. <laughs> <laughs> if this is if this ain't God Look making at you. room, Look where you are. and placing me before great men, then come on, you know, I love it, it works. I love it. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right, take us through some more of these keys. I oh, want to make I sure would, we cover I, them because they're so good. Oh yeah. I say, church, I hope you'll get this book and study. Honestly, I'm doing a series right now. You won't believe this. I probably shouldn't tell anybody this. I'm doing a series in my church called. You ready for this? How to get money from God. Wow. Because wow. I took a survey in our church and I said, okay, what is the number one need that you have? Mm -hmm. Our church is an inner city church, multiracial, multicultural. Mm -hmm. So I said, what is the number one need you have in your life that from God? Right, right, right. Over 80% of our people said money. Right. And you know what? That will probably money. be in most churches. You think it's true? If people Every, would tell the is truth. Is that right? It's exactly. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's, and it's, and it's a, a shame that people have this number one a need and we don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah. We're afraid to talk about it. Yeah. We're, you know, we're afraid that Congress will say, oh, there he goes again, yeah, talking about my, money. Here he goes. It's money, he money, go try money. Exactly. money for building. He's exactly. building something, building I can tell. Something, you know, <laughs> or worse yet, trying to put it in his own pocket. Yeah, really. Things like that. Yeah. And we got get we got get from that. I mean, it, have you ever wondered why this is such a deep-seated uh, issue in the church? And you start thinking about that thing. I started thinking about this, and I said, the devil does not want us mm -hmm. to uh, grasp hold of this knowledge mm -hmm. of how that we too can have wealth, yeah. and that we can master our money and mm -hmm. use it for God's kingdom. Yeah. Because he, if he knew that, if we started to do this, mm -hmm. we could have more TBN satellites. That's true. That's we have true. more TBN studios. True. We have, and really reach out mm -hmm. and for the Lord mm -hmm. in a powerful and, mm -hmm. and bigger way. Mm -hmm. You know, that one start the revolution. Amen. It's time for a revolution. Revolution, no question you know, about it. And, and to reach up and redeem mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. congregations. Mm -hmm. Our churches are, can't help anybody if we cannot help ourselves. That's true. That's true. You can't pay the rent. It's tough to oh, be involved man. in all those wonderful ministries, exactly, isn't it? You exactly. just can't do it. That's exactly right. And, the, and we can't support, mm -hmm. you know, such ministries like mm -hmm. TBN. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, because I believe in tithing to your church. Sure. And, but then you the also... The church ought to be tithing, too. Exactly. Absolutely. The church ought to be tithing and then mm -hmm. get some missions and outreach mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and supporting such great, you know, no uh, ministries like this. I agree totally. I told our folks the other day, I said, you know, I said, you know, you know, you talked about, in your book, you talk about uh, uh, having wealth for a reason. Right. And I told our right. folks the other day, I said, look, if you're just going to have wealth just for yourself, then just get a job. Right, right. Just get a job and quit griping about it and whatever you make, you make, right? If mm -hmm. it's just about you. Mm -hmm. But if it's about you really being able to pour things into the kingdom, there now you, you can begin to believe that God is going to open some doors for you and help you way beyond what you would be able to do by yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I talk about partnerships yeah. in here, the power of partnerships, how one can put to flight a thousand, mm -hmm. two, uh, 10,000. 10, mm -hmm. But even when you partner with God, mm -hmm. how many Woo. can you put to flight right there? You know, <laughs> he ought to count for a few, right? <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's good. You know, so um, we should make God our ultimate partner. Amen. Huh? I'm, I'm God's junior partner, yeah. and, I, you know, I, and I applied I applied these principles in the world, and I saw them work in the world, yeah. Yeah. and I said, you know what? I know these are rooted and grounded in the Bible. Yeah. 
in the Bible. I saw um, successful business people give, yeah. you know, give. They talk about tithing. Mm -hmm. Every um, book I read, secular book I read on success, mm -hmm. uh, talked about um, tithing, talked about giving mm -hmm. and everything. And so I, I, I said, that's straight out the Bible, yeah. straight out the that's Word. Where they got it. That's yeah. where they got that's it. Cool. And, and I said, it's interesting how mm -hmm. um, church folks don't want to do this, yeah. but then um, the world will they take it. They understand the need. They for understand it, it yeah. and they will go run with it. That's good. You know, That's but good. but we have this imbalance. How has it changed your church? I mean, I know when you got. I mean, you know, your dad did a great job getting the church up and get it going. But I mean, how did it change your church, and how has it changed individual people in your church? Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Well, first, the church just grow tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, we went from a two day. A week church to a seven day a week church because we end up building a multi million dollar multi purpose facility mm -hmm. uh, which opened up our outreach mm -hmm. greatly to our community. Mm -hmm. And so now we have basketball leagues, we have um, indoor soccer league. Indoor? Indoor wow. soccer league, yeah, <laughs> football is what they call it. Uh -huh. And our children just love it. They like, run around yeah. kicking the ball. Yeah. I, I, it's great, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. And then um, we have a great food and clothing outreach. We mm -hmm. have a school mm -hmm. that we're partnered with, yeah. um, grades five through eight, mm. you know, that really use it. So we went from just holding services yeah. a couple of days a week mm -hmm. to having a seven day a week ministry. open campus Isn't that ministry something? that is really reaching out. Praise God. Reaching hey, out. Good. And uh, plus um, we have um, uh, members whose lives have turned, literally T turned tell, tell around. Tell us about some of that. Can you I think have, of? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh most definitely. Yeah. I have just, just recently I had a single mother, a young lady, um, three children, who moved into her first home that even, she owns? That she owns. Woo. Watch this. In the midst of all of this economic turmoil, mm -hmm. and they talk, they talk about recession. She moved into a home. Watch this with equity. Mm. That deserves a praise that right there. That deserves something. <laughs> Amen. I'll that praise that, brother. Right there, That's man. wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. You know, it's her first home. Dude, guess what? People try to talk her out of that. So you, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't right. go there. You shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. But then she pressed her way mm -hmm. and she said, there's an inner treasure in me. Amen. I'm tired of I'm being <laughs> where I'm at. And you got to be sick and tired of yes, being sick and to tired get to, be to, go else, right? to get to the next level. You know, so I'm so proud of her. Mm -hmm. And then marriages, you know, the number one cause of marriage mm -hmm. is money. M marriage problems. Marriage problems, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Actually, actually, I'm, I mean, really mean divorce. Yeah, really. Is um, money. money. Mm -hmm. Is money, the number one. And you know, divorce rate is at 50% right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. um, even in the church. Yeah. And so it's, it's really a sad situation. Sad. And again, the number one cause of divorce mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. of, the, of money. Mm -hmm. And it's not really the lack of money, mm -hmm. but people will not talk about it. Mm -hmm. They won't communicate mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. And so we start communicating. Once mm -hmm. we started communicating, mm -hmm. they communicated mm -hmm. and everything. And that's it's good. really turned some marriages around. Boy, it's good. helped them that's grow great. and great. move into cool. another level. Just got a couple minutes, but you, mm -hmm. you would say to these pastors, mm -hmm. you'd say, man, Help your people with this, right? Oh, gosh. It's one thing to talk about economic empowerment zones and all those, which we need to be doing all of that. That's very, very important. Right. But man, if our own individual people are struggling, you know, individually, we've got to address this issue. I know we certainly yeah, had to yeah. in our life. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, oh yeah. And I really believe um, that the crisis that we're in right now, across the nation, mm -hmm. economic not, thing. Ec the economic mm -hmm. crisis, but mm -hmm. then even our family lives, mm -hmm. um, um, the, the job, the whole ho uh, housing situation, mm -hmm. all those things, because <clears throat> it's all turned, it's all connected together. Yeah. And the thing is, if, if, if this is going to turn around, it has to turn around in us mm -hmm. first. Yeah. It has to turn around in yeah. us. Yeah. We have to make the turnaround. Amen. We have to make the decision I that I that. want to be better grow better, do better, mm -hmm. live better, mm -hmm. and be, be the kind of Christian that God designed me yes. to be. Yes. And when I made that choice, he started to bless me wonderfully, mm -hmm. bless my family. Mm -hmm. I grew even in my own finances, mm -hmm. and the Lord just, just changed our lives. We had tragedy, but I'm here to tell you that you can have triumph, mm -hmm. uh, triumph, Amen. triumph. In your, in your tragedy, Amen. and God Amen. will do it. He'll work it out. Take a minute. Pray with us, would you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, pray with us. I, I want to talk and um, to first to those people who, are, who feel they're in a hopeless situation. Mm -hmm. You feel that you, there's no way out, and you're probably staring at bills on top of bills. 
God has an answer. He wants to release the inner treasure on the inside of you. Stop looking on the outside of you and start digging deep and asking God, show me, show me, show me how I can be a, a better vessel yes. unto you. Yes. So tonight I pray, Lord, mm -hmm. I pray right now, bless those persons mm -hmm. now who are struggling right now, who are wondering how do I, how can I make it? Mm -hmm. Show them how, that they can make it mm -hmm. right now because of the inner treasure that's inside them. Change their minds, yes, Jesus. change their uh, mindset, Help them, Lord. change the way they talk about themselves, mm -hmm. dear God, and do it now. Mm -hmm. I want you to do a quick work, dear God, to, the, to that mother, that single mother who doesn't know what to do. Do a quick work right now to that, that couple, that married couple that's on the edge of divorce right now. Turn it around, dear God. Yes. Turn it around, dear yes. God, yes. in the name of Jesus. I know you can, and I know you will. You did it with me, and if, I know if you did it with me, you can do it with somebody else. It's in your matchless name, Jesus, that we pray this Amen. prayer. We thank you for the victory Amen. in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Great to meet you. Thank you. Thank Bless you. you. Thank Amen. You. Thank so you. glad you came. Thank you. And once again, the book is called uh, Releasing, uh, Releasing, Releasing Your Inner Treasure. That's right. right. There it is. It's absolutely wonderful. Thanks for being here. Blessings in Sacramento, California. You're in a very important place. Yes. Yes, yes. you are. Yes, thank you. That whole place needs the Lord. Oh, Have yeah. you won the governor of the Lord yet? Not yet. We're working on it. We're going to get there. Amen. I believe it. Uh -huh. All right. Steve, you ready to sing again? Here he comes one more time singing. Oh, this is one of his very best. The Worship Medley. Welcome him right now, would you? Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, lift your hands for me. Come on, lift your hands with me. Just worship them. You see them worshiping in this studio. I want you to worship. Because that's what we're here to do is to magnify the Lord. Come on, worship him with Lord, I will lift my heart, praise unto your name. I offer up this sacrifice of praise. Humbly kneel before your throne and worship. I adore the Lamb of God. You're so holy, Lord, this lamb who once was slain. Heaven magnifies your name. Humbly kneel before your throne in worship. They adore, Lamb of God, glorified. Come on now, worship it with me. I will worship you in spirit. I will worship you in truth. Lamb of God, I worship you. Be exalted in this place as we stand in awe and worship. Lamb of God, be glorified. Lamb of God, be holy. Come on, everybody, sing it with me now. Oh, my, see, there is none like you. Sing to the Lord. I, I worship you, sweet Prince of Peace, hallelujah. That is what I want to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. Sing to it, ladies and gentlemen. He's my righteousness. I worship Almighty, Almighty God. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. Oh, heaven, it the glory of the rest. 
risen Lord who can compare with the beauty of the Lord forever you will be in this love upon the throne gladly I'll gladly bend my knee I'll worship Slam upon the throne. Lord, I'll gladly bend my knee. Nothing comes between you and me, Lord, and worship you. We stand in awe and worship Lamb of God. Be glorified. Be exalted in this place as we stand in awe and worship Lamb of God. Be Lamb of God, be glorified. Hallelujah. King of kings, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Be I tell you, is he a singer or what? He's a singer. I promise you that. He's a man of God is what he is. Amen. Anyway, I'm so glad you're with us tonight. It's been a great night. Let me say one more thing to you before. Uh, you know, throughout the show, there are numbers across the bottom of the screen. And behind those numbers are some of those wonderful, precious people in all of the world. I promise you. I've met these folks all over the network. They are great, great, great folks. They were folks who will pray with you until the, I mean, as we say in Oklahoma, until the cows come home. You understand what I'm saying? They'll pray with you until everything gets settled. So please, anytime, 24 hours a day, around the clock, feel free to call TBN and let someone talk with you and pray. No one's going to put pressure on you. No one's going to ask you for money or anything like that. We're simply going to be ministering to you and asking you how we can minister to you and bless you and help you in your own life. Fair enough? So I want to make sure that you do that. There they are right now. See, right across the way. Beautiful, precious folks. All right. I want you to meet someone tonight now. You, if you watch this show a lot, you may have seen him with me one night in Dallas, Texas, when I first introduced him to the TV and audience. He is one of my sons in the Lord who I'm very, very proud of, and God is using him in a great way literally all over this country. I would like for you to welcome, give a great South Florida welcome, would you please, to Evangelist James South. Welcome him right now. Would you do it? How you doing, brother? I'm good. I know you are. Great. <laughs> Now, James has been traveling with a great friend of ours named Randy Domain, yep. and they've been mm -hmm. seeing remarkable things take place. You just finished a meeting in uh, San Antonio. San Antonio yesterday. Yeah. Was yep. that good? It was great. Great. 
It was absolutely unbelievable. A uh, guy got up out of a wheelchair, had been paralyzed for seven years, paralyzed from a stroke. His hand was all gnarled up like this, uh, slowly began to break free. Amen. And when his hand broke free, then ultimately his leg gets up, walks out of the place. You're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. you're kidding. Isn't that wonderful? I believe Absolutely. that. I my heart. Isn't that wonderful? Pray, I mean, just you saw it right there. Yeah, in front right of there. Isn't that wonderful? In front of everybody. Praise God. Now, James, for years, I spent a number of years with R.W. Shambach. Mm -hmm. So you sort of got a little bit of this healing anointing that's on you from, it, from the man himself, right? You know, it's kind of contagious. Yes, it you, is. You become what you run with. Yeah, that's true. And I had a great privilege of, of being with Brother Shambach for a short time. And um, we, we went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, May the 12th, 2005. Mm -hmm. I was driving him up to um, Evelyn Roberts' funeral, actually, mm -hmm. and got to spend all the drive time there and back. Right. And we talked about all the things he had seen over the years, all the things that he had witnessed mm -hmm. with A.A. A. Allen and, and his own ministry yeah, and, unbelievable. and even TBN and all the different mm -hmm. um, things they used to do together. and, and Rallies. And yeah, all that. the rallies right. and that. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I'm nosy. I have to know things. So, <laughs> I've noticed that about you. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I asked him, I said, Brother Shambach, what is different now versus when you were out putting the big gospel tent up versus when Alan was around yeah. 50s, 60s, 70s, and even early 80s, mm -hmm. what's so different about people now that you don't see those great miracles? Great miracles. Mm -hmm. You know, the bones popping and people yeah. jumping up, running yeah. out, coming in one way and leaving another. Right. And he said one word, expectancy. Hmm. Expectancy on the part of the people? On the part of the people. Hmm. That over the years they've become so self-dependent, so independent. Mm -hmm that they didn't depend on God anymore. Mm -hmm. They would depend on a doctor, they may depend on this or that, yeah. but they didn't depend on God as Medicare much. insurance or something exactly. right to get them exactly. through. Hmm. When, when before, all they had is their faith in God. Mm. Mm. And Boy, I remember watching those, I remember watching those, how many of you used to watch those, those meetings on television? You ever watch those healing meetings on television? Mm -hmm. What's happening is a bunch of these young men, James mm -hmm. and the people that he runs around with, <laughs> it's a, I've, seen your, I've seen your website where literally, I mean, you're morphing out of what happened mm -hmm. in those old days mm -hmm. into what's happening with you guys in this mm -hmm. new day mm -hmm. because you're, you're going to places and you're setting up tents also. Yeah. Really? Are you doing that just because of that? You know, two years ago, the Lord really spoke to me about doing some tent ministry. And I'm going to tell you, you've got to be called into tent ministry. You can't just decide, I'm going to go out and buy me a tent and Plop jump square tent. in the middle of it because yeah. it'll eat your lunch. Yeah. Um, that's the hardest thing you can do. And I, I, I prayed one night and I said, Lord, I do not want to do this on my own. Yeah. I, I know you're in it, but send yeah. me somebody else Help to me, come Jesus. in here with this thing. <laughs> and along comes Randy Demain a year ago. He uh -huh. said, you know, God's calling me to tent ministry. Really? So we started from there, mm -hmm. and um, Randy said, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm doing these things, all these healings are happening, and all this is happening, and man, I need a great evangelist, and why don't we team up? So we teamed up, mm -hmm. and now we're going around the country, all 50 states over the next five years, mm -hmm. either in a tent, amphitheater, some neutral ground, somewhere that's mm -hmm. not a church. We believe in the local church. Sure you absolutely, do. Yeah. absolutely believe you need to be part of a local church, but we're going to a neutral ground, neutral mm -hmm. place that everybody feels welcome that everybody's Amen. willing yeah. to come into. Yeah, that's good. And you're seeing a ton of folks get saved. Tons of folks get saved. Praise God. That's wonderful. <laughs> Just thousands of people mm. getting healed yeah. um, ha and having a lot of fun doing it. I know you are. I know, know you are. Now, I'm going to say, I, 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 want to, I want to encourage you, if you're a pastor, I want to encourage you to get this guy in your church. I'm mm -hmm. telling you what he is seeing, the numbers of people that he's seeing come to the Lord is because what happens is when James goes to these places, I mean, Heaven breaks out. It's unbelievable mm -hmm. the things that take place. For instance, you're seeing, you're seeing this manifestation mm -hmm. of the gold mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. You know, with uh, Jeff Jansen and Randy Domain, they've mm -hmm. been seeing this for a while now. Year, mm -hmm. year and a half, they've been seeing these jewels pop out and fall on the ground. I mean, I mean, literally, I mean, literally, literal, literally they're just jewels that just literal plop diamond, out. Literal diamonds that will fall on the ground, amethyst, emeralds, do you rubies. See them, I mean, that, do you see them falling out of the sky? Sometimes it's like a shooting star to just pew. And then hit the ground. And and there and you pick you can pick it up. You can pick it up. I mean, people pick them up in meetings all the time. Is that not unbelievable? And then you see mm -hmm. you see this gold gold dust. So pe mm -hmm. now the gold dust. So talk to me about what happens with the gold dust. I saw that for the first time back in December. I was in uh, Southern California at a conference with mm -hmm. David Tomberlin, mm -hmm. and I was praying for these two young Korean guys, 17, 18 years old, mm -hmm. and these two guys, they were zoned out. They were before God in their worship. Mm -hmm. And um, I was praying for the sick. 
called all the sick people to come forward and want to pray for you. And I called these two guys out. I said, come up here. I want you to stand right here on the corner of the stage. Well, I prayed for 200 and something people and then came back to them. And then I said a few more words. And then I went back to them again. And finally, when I touched them, I, I reached out and barely touched their jacket. And the moment I touched it, gold popped all over it. Blew my mind. Just, I mean, just dust, bad. just covered, just looked like a Porter Wagner jacket. I mean, this thing was, <laughs> it was phenomenal. Is that right? Glittering, and so he goes out. I tell you, I love, I love stuff like this. Don't you love stuff like this? Now, I've got to say, you know, it's unbelievable. I'll say, you know, I mean, a Harvard-educated Baptist is not supposed to love stuff like this, you know. What? But I love this stuff, Absolutely. man. I just, mm, I love this. Then stuff. I pray for his brother. Same thing. So, you know, I've been praying for folks. I finished preaching, been praying for folks for an hour and a half, for two hours. Finally, everybody's saying, hey, are you going to go to lunch? Are you going to stay here? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. Start out the door, and if I make it, I make it. Finally, I get out the door, go to lunch, come back for the night session, 6 o'clock that night. These two kids are still in the floor in the they same place. They were slain in the spirit, and they stayed the there all afternoon. And until about 9.30 that night, and they got up, and they were so drunk they couldn't even walk. Uh, drunk in the Lord. Isn't that something? And, it's now, why, why do you think this is happening, James? I mean, well, it, uh, what's this a sign of to you? I mean, I, I tell you, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that we have mm -hmm. to know it, to tell you the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. I just love the fact that it's happening, and mm -hmm. it's supernatural. It's probably beyond our ability to understand. Well, well why do you think it's happening? I, I think because there's two different types of supernatural. There's ev evil supernatural, and there's God supernatural. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people out in Vegas on the Strip levitating and walking on water and doing all these things from mm -hmm. the evil side of it. Mm -hmm. And and if you'll ever notice, God will show his mighty strong arm mm -hmm. when he needs to. Yeah. And I think we're moving into the moment of a true revival where the signs and the wonders occur and the debate's mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Because when you walk in power, mm -hmm. the debate is over. There's no yeah. way that we can out-debate people. No, that's right. We can't out-philosophize them, no, but that's right. we can absolutely out-demonstrate out them. Out-demonstrate them. we got to do it. Absolutely. We've got to do it. Yeah, yeah. The message of the kingdom, the whole gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom, mm -hmm. is it has to be demonstrated in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the supernatural, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all in the spirit. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> and, and I believe mm. that um, I've seen too many people healed, mm -hmm. even in our own church. Yeah, I know. A kid raised from the dead, um, several people with cancer. I mean, it's just it goes on and on and on and on and mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And as time goes by. You know, we see these people here. There's no way to deny that. Well, I know you it. can't deny that. Yeah, what we've seen is just amazing. What amazing? I mean, James and I—he's a member of my church, by the way. That's yeah. the church he's talking about. But anyway, <laughs> but but we have been seeing these unbelievable mm -hmm. miracles lately. Mm -hmm. James and I and a friend of ours on our staff went to pray for a baby that was literally dead, mm -hmm. and this baby was raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was the most amazing thing yeah. I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely. just absolutely wonderful. We've seen all sorts of miracles take place. <clears throat> there is some. There is a whole fresh new. It mm -hmm. seems to me. I know mm -hmm. you guys are seeing it every mm -hmm. night. But it seems like to me as a pastor, there's a whole fresh move of the supernatural is just absolutely crashing yeah, into churches. Yeah. I believe there really is. There, there's a great refreshing of the supernatural coming into churches. Mm -hmm. um, you know, me and Steve Brock were talking a few minutes ago about the supernatural and about miracles happening. And it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger on the body at large. It's no longer just this evangelist or that evangelist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's anybody that's just crazy enough to believe the Word of God. Amen. You know, I, I'm goofy enough to believe that it works, and it does. <laughs> it, if you look back at all the Voice of Healing guys, if you look back at, at Lindsay, you look back at Branham, you look back at A.A. A. Allen, Jack Coe, you go to YouTube, pull them up, watch some of their videos. Mm -hmm. One thing in Are common. Are those things on YouTube? Absolutely. Everything's on. You're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? I didn't know I was on YouTube. But yeah. they... Um, they had a reckless faith. Yeah. Absolutely reckless mm -hmm. faith. Mm -hmm. they, they were just crazy enough to believe that the Word of God works, mm -hmm. and it does. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. We, mm -hmm. we go in there, and we, we don't care if people doubt. Mm -hmm. Doubt if you want to. Mm -hmm. But the power of God's real. Amen. It's absolutely real. Amen. So could you pray for people tonight? Yeah. Does anybody here need a miracle tonight? You really need a touch from the Lord tonight? Wow. Man, we might have to, we might have to pray for some folks I'll here tell you tonight. Well, this is a crowd of miracles. You, could have, you could have revival tonight right amen. here, I think. Yeah, amen. Amen and amen. Ooh, we might have to do that. Let's talk it'll just a, a little bit. It'll be a miracle if this brother makes it out of the house with that jacket, because I want it. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen to that. So, you know, for instance, when you look out, James, when you look out on an audience like this, I know mm -hmm. we've talked about this many times, do you see miracles happening as you look out at the people now, or, or are you, would you just wait and then just pray for whoever might need it? It goes both ways. Right. I mean, there's times that I would see um, visibly an angel of the Lord pass mm -hmm. over people. 
and, and then I would go to that person and, and the word would come to me as I go to them. As I take that step of faith, then the word would come. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just say, hey, if you're sick and afflicted to your body, get up here, mm -hmm. pray for them, and it happens. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. um, all different ways, and sometimes walking through an airport even, mm -hmm. I'll have a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it just comes different ways mm -hmm. at different times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, as mm -hmm. I was walking up on the platform tonight, um, we hadn't discussed this at no, all. No, at all. I, we would not <laughs> planned this one single bit, I promise you. And, and, and that's I what I, I was just... thinking about, was praying for some folks who There's a lady sick. out here. In fact, mm -hmm. bring me those microphones, Killer. Mm -hmm. Mike, give me those microphones here. And let's, let's bring them over here. That's all right. That's all right. Let, let's uh, <laughs> let's, uh, yeah. let, let's yeah. go out here and uh, minister to your folks. Can we do it? Father, we know your word is true. Yes, Denise is yes. looking for an answer. Pray, She's church. asking for wisdom. Y'all join in with me. If you have a prayer yes. language, start praying in tongues. Yes. Join in with this. Y'all are on the prayer team Thank tonight. You, Lord Jesus. Be, be part of this and, and join in for she the sister. So, Father, we just bring Shanice to you. Yes. And the wisdom that she's desiring yes. in her heart, Lord. Yes. Tonight, we call for that wisdom to enter her. Lord, give her complete and total clarity, complete and total definition of what she's to do, where she's to go, Father, and deliver her from the friends that she's not supposed to be around. I see a group of folks around you that are dragging you down. One or two people. And they're kind of holding you back. The Lord's going to reveal that to you. And that wisdom that you're asking for, He's going to yes. give you that. He's going to tell you who yes. those people are. Yes. And when you go out of here, yes. you'll, you'll know what to do. And you'll yes. take those steps. Because the Bible says that yes. steps of righteous man or woman yes. is ordered by God. And your steps are ordered. Amen. So, Father, tonight I seal yes. this prayer Bless of faith her, in the name of Bless Jesus. Bless her, heal her, sweet that Father. No, no in the name of devil Jesus. from hell can come near in the her. Name no of more Jesus. confusion. Your spirit of confusion, Hallelujah, I bind Lord. you in Jesus' name. Yes. And Shanice, I loose you into the blessings of God yes. from this day forward. In Thank Jesus you, Lord name. Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. I raise my precious sister to you. I ask that you would touch her and heal her now in Jesus' name. We come against all sickness and all disease in her life. We say, Satan, you must get your hand off of her. Every, every, every illness, every disease, every sickness, every malady, you must go now in the name of Jesus. And we loosen to her the blessing of God and the full health of the kingdom to be yours, sweet sister, in the precious and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. Woo! Amen. You know, you're talking about the word of knowledge. Uh huh. And I had knees when we were sitting up there. Right. You're in, right? Okay. This is Dorothy. I prayed for a lady in San Antonio about four months ago. She came running up to me in the crusade this week. I said, do you remember me? I said, no. She said, my knees were healed. And so tonight, the Lord's going to heal your knees too. Amen. Amen. Regenerate the cartilage. Regenerate the knee joints yes. right now in Jesus' yes. name. The in anointing the name of, of God is all over you. There's such a joy Amen. about her. Amen. Woo! Stay right here with Praise me. God. Amen. Amen. I take authority over this disease Amen. and this infirmity, and Amen. I can tell it now to yes. loose its hold yes. and to never come back. In Praise Jesus the Lord. Name. Praise Jesus the Lord. Name. Come lay your hands Father, on these, James. I tell Amen. you right now, loose yourself from this lady. I pronounce her well, yes. completely healed yes. from the top of yes. her head yes. to the yes. soles of her feet. No yes. more to be infirmed by some yes. affliction from the yes. pit of hell. Yes. Devil, I tell you yes. to get yes. out of here right now. You've yes. got to pack up yes. and go because yes. the blood of Jesus yes. is in this yes. place. And I tell you yes. right now, loose her in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. Father, touch his sister now in the yes. name of Jesus. In the Ooh. name of the Lord. We shout and touch it. Miracles are happening even now here in this studio and all around the world. Just got to reach out and touch him. Through the miracle of television, the miracle power of God is flowing into your home right now. Receive it. Receive it. It's yours. Claim your healing now, wherever you are, in every situation, in every time and place. There's a truth that never changes. No matter what the world may say, the truth is Jesus loves you. The truth is Jesus cares. And you don't have to wait a lifetime to receive what you need. Just believe. Even now, Jesus has a miracle 
for you even now he's the shelter from the storm you're going through don't give up don't be discouraged don't even be afraid for the lord of glory is here right now to make a way even now Hallelujah. Listen, everybody in this studio, listen. Everything is going to be all right. You don't have to worry anymore. It's already taken care of. Listen, the price has all been paid. What you're looking for is here right now. You don't have to wait another day. Even now, Jesus has a miracle for you. Even now, he's the shelter from the storm you're going through. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't even be afraid. Let me tell you something. The Lord of glory is in this house right now to make a way. shelter from the storm you're going through. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't even be afraid. For the Lord of glory, he's here, Richard. He's here. He'll make a way. Even though Jesus has a miracle for you. Even the shelter from the storm you're going through. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't even be afraid. For the Lord of glory, he's here in this studio. He's where you are right now. Even James, come here. Tell people how to get saved quickly, quickly, quickly. Friend, if you don't have Jesus in your life, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. This entire network, every person you see here is dedicated to one thing, and that's leading you to Jesus. Right. So tonight, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. In Romans chapter 10, it says, if you believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth you will be saved so tonight is your night to be saved it's real simple just repeat this prayer after me I'm gonna pray a phrase you pray the very same phrase just say dear Lord Jesus I come to you a sinner I confess my sins I ask forgiveness of my sins 
I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you came to earth. I believe you were crucified. And I believe you rose again on the third day. Yes. And you ascended back to the Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer according to the Word of God, you are born again. You are born again. Hallelujah. And around the world, we're Amen. born again. Around That's the world. greatest thing. That That's right. Now, oh, hallelujah. Let, me say, let me say one something. Here. I want to pray before we go. Steve, I want you to join me, and James, join me here. I want us to pray for everybody who is sick. There's some, I know, man, listen, I've had... We've had sickness in our family. I've sure, had a wife sure. that's been sick. I, I know what it's like to have someone that you love who is sick. And if you're sick tonight, I want you to absolutely pray with me right now. I'll pray. You, don't, just, you just agree with me, will you? And say, Lord, I'm accepting this miracle now in the name of Jesus. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we raise every person across the world tonight that needs the miracle touch of Jesus. We ask you to touch them and heal them fully in Jesus' name. We come against all disease and all sickness, and we speak the blessing of God and the full health of the kingdom into your life now in Jesus name and we say be well in the name of the Lord in the name of the Lord amen amen we love you much thank you so much for joining us tonight this has been a powerful and wonderful wonderful night thank you precious audience for being with us tonight all right have a blessed and glorious day we love you and we will see you next time right here on praise the Lord good night everybody been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, K1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, Call a prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord. has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.